Many years ago, in the city of Onicha, there lived a couple named Ogi and Obom. God blessed them with triplets named Kambili, Kamsi, and Kosarachi. They had such a beautiful family that caught the eyes of others, admired their family, most especially their beautiful girls who had grown into beautiful teenagers. Anywhere they go, people will always turn their heads to look at the beautiful creation God created. They were that beautiful and admired by all. One morning, as the triplets were all set to go to school, they sat in the dining eating their breakfast. Their father, Obom, sat at the couch looking all happy and smiling, staring at his daughters. He said to his wife, We asked God for one child. He gave us three beautiful daughters. God has really blessed us. Do you know that even in the office every day, all my colleagues used to ask me, Papa Triplet, how is your beautiful daughters? Papa Triplet that. Papa Triplet this. They have actually forgotten my real name. <laughs> it was very funny, but I loved it. Me too, my husband though. I am actually every other woman's dream. They will always tell me, I wish God blessed me with triplets like you. Your children are so beautiful. You are really blessed, Mama Triplet. Oh, Mo, my ears is always full anytime I go out with them. God has really blessed us, my husband. Yes, my darling wife. But I noticed that Kambili is not always happy. I have asked her severely why she's not always happy. She refused to say anything. I am fine, Papa. That is what she always say. Please go and check on her. Talk to her when they come back from school. Maybe she will be able to open up to you as woman to woman. Okay, my husband. I will. Ogie replied to her husband. They finished gisting. The triplet finished their breakfast and left for school. Meanwhile, Kambili is the oldest among the triplets. She is an introvert. She is not outspoken like the other two sisters. And she was not book smart like her other two sisters. She had a different personality. She loves to draw and paint. And she's always on her own and by herself all the time, drawing and painting. She doesn't socialize, even in school. Emily doesn't have friends. Her only friend is her drawing and painting, which made the other two sisters to dislike her sometimes. I miss the happy family they portray outside. The triplets are not together as one. Meanwhile, Kamsi and Kosarachi are the brilliant ones. They top their classes. They make friends and socialize a lot. And this made people to like them a lot. Even their mother always compliments their intelligence and will always ask Kembili to imitate her sisters and stop being too dull. One evening, as the girls came back from school, Emily went up to her room to freshen up and change her clothes. She immediately started to draw while she listens to music because this is the only thing that makes Kambili so happy. While her two sisters were busy reading together and rehearsing some topics, their mother, Oge, came back from her shop that evening. She went up immediately to meet her daughters. She first entered Kamsi's room and she met Kamsi and Kosarachi reading together. 
she was so happy and proud seeing her girls always reading. They greeted their mother, hugged her, and started to tell her how their day's activity went. Pamsi started first. Mama, today, me and Kosarachi were picked to represent our school in the upcoming maths competition. Wow, this is good news. And I know the two of you will make me and your father proud. Yes, Mama, we will make you and Papa proud. Kosarachi replied to her mother. Not only that, Mama, will be very popular in school after this. We're already preparing, as you can see. We must win this competition. Then, Oge remembered Kambili and asked them, But where is your sister Kambili? Why is she not here reading with you people? Ah, Mama, Kambili reading with us. She can never. She's a dollar. I don't know why she's even my sister always disgracing us in school with her low grades. Hamsi said, and her mother shot her immediately. Stop saying that, Kamsi. She's your sister no matter what. Let's go and find out what she's doing. Of course, Mama. You already know what she's doing. But let's go. As they got to Kambili's room, they heard loud music. And Oge opened the door entered inside Kimberly's room and off the music. Kimberly, Oge shouted at her. What are you doing? Why are you not reading with your sisters? Kimberly was shocked because she didn't notice when her mother entered inside her room because of the loud music she was playing. She quickly stood up and greeted her mother. Good afternoon, Mama. I didn't see you come in. I am drawing, Mama. I saw this beautiful portrait in my dream. I decided to bring it to life. Will you shut up, Kambili? You saw this beautiful portrait in your dream and you decided to bring it to life. Are you okay, this girl? Do you know that your sisters were selected today to represent your school in maths competition? Are you aware? Kambili replied to her mother, Yes, Mama, I know. I was there when the announcement was made in our classroom. Is there a problem, Mama? Uge slapped her. You're asking me if there is a problem. Ha, ah, Chinekena. Why are you not selected to Kambili? Why are you so dull, this girl? Can't you see? Your sisters, the way they are doing and performing well in school, they always take the first in their classes. Take their studies very seriously. They also aspire to become doctors someday. But you, you can never read. I've never seen you read, this girl. You carry your class on top of your head, always with low and bad grades. Can't you imitate your sisters? Read and upgrade your grades in school. Eh, hey, Kambili, can't you? But Mama, I love drawing and painting. See my latest painting of you and Papa. It's very beautiful. Oge didn't even wait to see the painting and the drawing from Kambili. She angrily collected the piece of drawing and tore it into pieces. All my children will be educated, including you, Kambili. It is better you join your sisters and read, or I will seize all your painting materials immediately. Kambili was so sad and shed hot tears. Tears was streaming down her face. She couldn't even talk. She was very hot. In order to avoid her mother's problem, she packed her drawing materials and picked up her books, entered Kamsi's room to read with them. But Kambili never concentrated. She was still heartbroken about the painting 
her mother tore into pieces. She spent days to complete that beautiful painting. And her mother just tore it just like that without even looking at it. Her sisters, Kamsi and Kosarachi, ignored her and continued with their own studies. That evening, when Obom came back from work, Oge didn't even wait for her husband to remove his clothes or at least relax. She started to nag. Obom, warn your daughter, Kimberly. She's getting on my nerves. Ah, ah, woman, you didn't even greet me. Oh, allow me to relax a bit. What is it again with Kimberly? She's getting on my nerves. Why is she never serious with her studies like her sisters? Always drawing and painting that rubbish that she's doing. Her grades are so low. One how? But okay, I have told you that Kimberly is different. You have to calm down and understand your daughter. Kimberly loves drawing and painting. If you see her latest painting of us, you will be very, very shocked. I saw her drawing one night and this drawing was so beautiful. Ah, she's very talented. Omo, if you see this drawing, okay, treat Kambili right. I don't want any of my daughters to feel left behind or not loved. Biko, Kambili takes time to learn things. She's not like Kamsi and Kosarachi, who are smart and more intelligent. You see where my problem is coming from you. You always like defending Kambili. She's different. She's this. She's that. I do not say she should not draw or paint. Let her do it at her leisure time. I want her to become a doctor too, like her sister's dreams. I don't like that drawing and painting habit that she always do all the time. Let her stop it though. Okay, Chukun, one problem with you is that you don't listen. Biko, leave me alone. Let me go and change my clothes. Because of this, Oge treated Kambili so differently. She started to resent Kambili without even knowing it. One morning, as the triplet is ready to leave for school, they reminded their mother about the clothes she promised to buy for them. Mama, don't forget our birthday clothes. Too. Remember, tomorrow is Saturday and it's our friend Ma's birthday. You promised to buy new clothes for us. Kamsi said to her mother, Yes, Mama, me and Kamsi, we want pink gown. Mama, pink is our favorite color, right, Kamsi? Kosarachi asked, and Kamsi replied to her, Yes, Mama, pink. Pink, yes. Kambili also requested her own. Mama, I want blue color. That is my favorite. I want a loyal blue color. Thank you, Mama. Their mother, Oge, agreed to get the dress when she's coming back from her shop. They left to their various destinations. In the evening, when they all got back from school, their mother is already at home. They greeted their mother and Kamsi requested for the birthday dress immediately. Mama, Mama, were you able to get the birthday dress? Please, where is my own? Okay, Chuku gave them the birthday dress according to their request. When Kamsi saw Kembili's dress, it was so beautiful. She requested her mother, Mama, the dress you bought for me is not that beautiful as I want, Mama. Remember, I requested specifically for pink dress with a touch of blue. Oge was looking confused. But Kamsi, you didn't say anything like that. Oh. You only said I should buy you a pink dress. Kosara, she backed Kamsi up. Mama, she said she wanted a touch of blue. Maybe you did not hear it well. 
Kimberly, on the other hand, loved her dress. She thanked her mother and wanted to leave. When Kamsi said she likes Kimberly's dress, Kimberly, I like your own dress. Can I have it? You can have mine as an exchange. Please, after all, you are not the party type. Kamsi didn't even allow Kimberly to agree. She immediately grabbed the dress out of Kimberly's hand. Kimberly asked her, Kamsi, it's disrespectful to collect something I didn't say yes to forcefully. I love my dress. I was also invited to the party just like you. I want to go to the party just like you too. Give me back my dress. I don't like pink and you know it. Kamsi turned to their mother and said, Mama, please ask Kimberly to be an elder sister for once and allow me to wear this dress to the party. When I come back, I will give it back to her. No, Kamsi. I won't give you my dress. Give it back. But their mother, without thinking twice, asked Kambili, Be a big sister, Kambili. Let her wear the dress. Try and wear the pink one. You know it's been long you wore pink dress. Okay? Please, try and wear the pink one. Okay, collected the pink dress from Kansi and gave it to Kambili. Kambili collected the pink dress and looked at it. She stared at her mother. Mama, you are always siding with Kamsi. This is not fair. I requested for a blue gown. I wanted to go to this party. I was also invited, Mama, and my blue dress is what I want. Why are you doing this? Kamsi requested for a pink dress. Why don't she wear it whether she likes it or not? She didn't even appreciate you that bought the dress in the first place. I want my blue dress back. Or I'm not going to the party anymore. Why do you like to complain a lot, Kambili? You don't even like going to parties. What changed this time around? Anyways, if you cannot wear the pink dress, you cannot bother yourself. Don't bother going. Kambili angrily threw the dress on the floor and left. But Oge did not do anything. She allowed Kamsi to have her way by wearing that dress meant for Kambili. The next morning, Kamsi dressed up in the blue dress meant for Kambili. Kosarashi also dressed up in her own clothes. Meanwhile, Kambili, the other night, cried bitterly. She started to question herself. Why don't my mother like me? She always favored Kamsi and Kosarachi more than me. Few days ago, Mama did the same thing. I have this hard subject they gave me assignments on. I tried so hard to get the answers, but I couldn't get the answers. I decided to ask Kamsi and Kosarachi but when I got to their room, I saw that they were very busy with their own homework. I decided to go to Mama. On getting there, my mother was busy watching her favorite program. I approached her. Mama, please, I need help with this homework. I couldn't do it by myself. Please help. My mother looked at me and said, Kimberly, can't you see I am busy? No, I don't like missing any part of this program, no matter what. Please leave and come back when I'm done watching. I decided to wait for my mother. I sat at the dining, staring at my book. Few minutes later, Kamsi and Kosarachi came down from their room to ask their mother some question. They were arguing about one particular topic. They came down to ask Mama's opinion. Mama, Kamsi said, To solve this math, we need to apply this formula. And I said, no, it is not. We both try out two different formulas. And he gave two different answers. 
Please, Mama, which one is correct? Oh, these girls. I am watching my favorite program. You know I don't like disturbance. What is it? Let me see. She soft their mask for them, forgetting the important program she was watching. Afterwards, she entered kitchen to cook, forgetting me that first asked her for assistance. I wonder why my mother treats me so differently. This is the only birthday I wanted to go after a long while of not going to parties with my sisters. But my mother, as usual, gave out my dress to Kamsi to wear without considering my own feeling. Maybe because Kamsi and Kosarachi are more smart and intelligent than me. What do you think Kimberly will do next? We will all get their mother change towards Kimberly. We will find out in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching African Folk Tales by Mona Family. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the story. Comment and share. See you on the next one. Goodbye and God bless you.